So the rewards of uh, a nice climb, hopefully, is a nice descent. And again, traction is a big issue, particularly if we're trying to control our speed. If we're just going brake free, heading on down, as long as we've assumed a good strong position on the bike, driving energy through with a drop tail and drop wrist, the bike's going to pretty much go the direction I'm pointing. The wheel wants to take the path of least resistance, but if my head, shoulders and hips are pointing somewhere, those tyres are going to be driven in the direction I want. We're not really relying on steering downhill at any great speed with the front end using the wheel, but much more with our body position. And we've kind of looked at speed control in an earlier issue where when we are controlling our speed, it's about controlling the traction that we can gain it to slow us down. This descent here, as well as being rooty in the spring, summer and uh, winter, during the autumn and winter is covered in leaves, so I can't really see what's beneath my tyres. Really need to make sure then that I'm not clutching or jabbing at brakes to control my speed, because as soon as that wheel's locked, rather than just slow me down, it could accelerate off in a different direction. If I stop the wheel from rolling forwards or in the direction of the fall line, it will try and pick a path of less resistance. Once it's locked, it could easily find a sender route that's going off in a different direction and wash away from under me. Front wheel, that's going to have pretty serious consequences. Back wheel, fish tailing around behind you once that wheel's locked up, it can be quite hard then to control the direction of your bike. So we really want to make sure the bike goes where we want it. And we can do that by driving the bike, not steering it, but also by using our brakes in a progressively smooth manner maybe slow in and accelerate through the section rather than halfway down deciding I don't like it and trying to take speed out. But that traction, once that wheel's locked, it actually offers far less traction than when it's rolling under a controlled um, braking. So as long as I can keep that wheel rolling fairly smoothly and feel for the moment that it starts to skid, ease off, maybe alternate between front and back brake a little to modulate so that if my root back wheel is passing over a route where it's very easily picked up and starts to slide, I might then let it pass over and then put the brake back on a bit more strongly. And the same with the front. When I start to cut up towards a rooty section with my front wheel and I'm braking quite heavily, it's very easy for it to start to wander off and slide away quite quickly in a different direction. There might be moments that although I'm trying to control my speed, the best way to do that is by easing off the front brake momentarily, letting it pass over the wet slippery area or the, the, the part that's got the most uh, potential for loss of traction and then get back on it once I've reached uh, something with a, where, with a bit better braking potential on it and a bit more grip available to me. The other thing is our core position on the bike. Again, I don't want to start to over rotate and start to drag the bike. The moment I'm accelerating faster than the bike, my traction is going to be reduced. My back wheel is going to be flapping around. My back brake is going to do very little and I'm going to flirt with the front brake, possibly to an extent that things start to go wrong. So energy down and through the bike, remember, mass driving the bike. In doing so, we're going to drive the tyres deeper into the tread, into the softer ground, and get more traction. We're going to splay our tyres out more, we're going to get more grip, and hopefully a lot more control physically, which will lead to more control emotionally, which will mean that I don't tighten up, hold my breath, and suffer from all the negative consequences of the flight and fight instincts that can quickly come to the surface when I start to lose control emotionally. So to a certain extent, when you can't see the actual trail surface due to leaf coverage, or it could be any number of uh, things covering the trail surface itself, we just need to err on the side of well, preparedness, really, not caution. We don't want to be anticipating uh, and tensing up, but we just want to stay fairly loose and be quick to react to things, but by being soft on the bike, not by death gripping, holding our breath, or uh, gritting our teeth too much. Letting those wheels roll smoothly as we can, rather than bobbling up, locked up, and kicking up and over things. Um, but beware, further on down there, the likelihood is that there's going to be some braking bumps. So just expecting the unexpected. Um, where we've got a longer descent and people are going to suddenly start to think that they're going too rapidly, they're going to be trying to decelerate. And inevitably on a natural tail particularly, especially if it's on soft loamy stuff, those braking bumps are going to form. And although there looks like a smooth surface over the top thanks to the leaves, there could be lots of little undulations. Now, if it's a nice smooth trail and I'm up on top of my bike, on my up on my toes and up on my wrists, I'll probably get away with it. But if there's a sudden pothole I'm in, in that position, the bike's going to decelerate rapidly. It's just going to send me out forward of the centre line, probably over the bars. At the very least, I'm going to be in no position to control the bike.
So with poor technique, just locking the back brake up, the tyre might have stopped turning, it's not necessarily going to slow me down much, and in fact the tyre might start to accelerate in a direction I'm not inspecting. Now as you get at more competent levels of riding, you get used to controlling your skid, that's all well and well by using your hips to drive the back end of the bike even though the wheel's locked. It's perhaps better to try and keep the wheels turning in, going where you want them in the first place rather than having to try and connect. There will be times when your back wheel locks up and that's the only way to control your speed. But if you're in the right position, even when it's locked, you'll be able to generate some grip. If you're in the wrong position, you won't and the back end will just swan tail around, fish tail around and various other animal tails around and cause you some problems. What happens then generally is once you realise you're not slowing down using your back brake as you float with the front, which is where some even bigger issues can arise. But just to give you an example, on a fairly small slope, I don't want to do it on a, a proper bit of trail, I don't want to ruin the trail by dragging my brake, but we'll give it one run down just to show you what happens if you just merely lock up and what happens to the back end when I start crossing over roots with a locked up wheel. So if I just lock up here... Okay, I use my hips a little to straighten things out, but you can see an example of how the back wheel, A, just bounces over stuff and B, starts to slip away from me, which is never a good thing. So if I want to control my speed correctly, keep good traction on the tyres and good grip on the trail, positioning myself correctly with heels dropped and wrist drops, pushing my mass through the bike, but also using both brakes together, maybe modulating between one and the other, but definitely trying not to lock them up, I can still ride with a hell of a lot of control and even though on a fun ride I might just blitz down this bit just to show you the example of how much control you can have on steep surfaces without skidding, let's just try and do it under as much control as possible. A better rider can ride steep stuff with more control and then slowly build their speed. Any fool can blitz in here top whack and make it 8 out of 10 times but the 2 times you don't it's going to really hurt. Plus, added to which, you're likely to lock up your brakes and mash up the trails for the next riders. So, ride with a bit of consideration, a bit of style, a bit of grace and a bit of class, somewhat like me, and uh, everything should be rosy. So when it comes to maintaining traction over more rooty sections, a couple of things to remember. Slippery is a bit of a state of mind. If you think slippery and tighten up and hold your breath, you're one solid lump. When the bike tries to go up over the roots, rather than freely rising up over roots and then maintaining a forward motion, it's going to meet a resistor in terms of you and your mass. It's not going to be a lift up, and it's more likely to slide off and slide down. Secondly, if I come in hot, then I look down and freak out because I see them and grab a handful of brake. By the time I've grabbed that front brake, rather than the wheel rolling smooth and straight, it's just going to ride off, slide off, and start to detract and go off in different directions. And suddenly, it's no longer under me, but next to me or behind me, which is not the place to find your bike. Ideally what I want to do is maybe do my, if I am going to do any speed control, is do it before on this nice smoother section where there's good traction and then be easing off even if I'm going quite slow as long as I'm accelerating through this section and my mass stays pointing where I want, my heels and wrist dropped, I'm going to drive the bike in the direction I want rather than it pick its own path of free will which will leave me with a taste of tree root in my mouth. So if I've got the confidence, then I'm going to let the bike roll freely. The gradient's going to help me pick up speed, accelerate through the section and smooth over those roots. If I haven't, then I want to do my speed control before and then, even though I'm entering more slowly, accelerate over those roots. So maybe if I was taking a bit of speed out here, I would then ease off and then catch the bike again lower down. 